case you haven't realised, I'm building the rear axle today for my Series 2 Land Rover. To help seat the gasket, I'm using Molly Grease. This is a classic alternative to gasket jointer and should help provide the correct number of leaks. Having applied grease to both sides of the gasket, the six 3 8 inch bolts are tightened to secure the freshly painted brake back plate to the axle flange. A gentle tap is all that's needed to get the bolts through a little excess paint in the holes. If you have been affected by any content you see on this channel, in a good way, please let me know by pressing the like button now. I got bored with this slow ratchet, so I engaged turbo mode to get the job moving a little bit faster. Now, a lot of you may be wondering why I painted the adjuster and this spring thing and this brake thing here. And to be honest, I'm wondering that too. Uh, but it uh, it has stopped it rusting, which is good. Uh, and now I'm going to have to clean that up and deal with that. It took ages to clean all the excess paint off the contact surfaces. I really must remember to use more masking tape next time. I also took the opportunity to dress some of the indents up on the brake adjuster with a round file. Having applied a new brake master cylinder, the next job is to fit the brake shoes. It's always easier to put the bottom spring on the brake shoes before fitting them to the brake plate. What would make this process less cumbersome would be not having the camera in the way at the same time. If you're enjoying watching me struggle here, please don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to my channel. With the bottom spring holding the shoes in place, the top spring can be put on. I had to knock up a quick puller for this using some welding wire and a broom handle. With both the springs in place, it's important not to forget the little round bracket that stops the shoes jumping off the bottom pivot, like I did. I went back and put that on later. Having packed the bearings with as much grease as I could, I promptly forgot how to assemble a hub.
So to clean this thread, I've just taken a piece of welding wire and I've bent 90 degree bends on each end and I've cut this with the side cutters. And that produces a sharp point on each end. Just one piece of welding wire, mild steel. And then you can squash that into the thread of the nut. And you can just rotate it round and clean those threads out as you go. And if you'd like to know where I got this idea from, a uh, big thanks and a big shout out to my friend Mr. Crispin96. If you've not seen anything on his channel, go and check that out. Uh, that's where I got this idea from. And I think he stole it from somewhere else. Okay, so I've got a clock on here so I can measure end float in the bearings and I'm going to back this first nut off from finger tight um, one twelfth of a rev revolution that's half a flat and that gives me 0.25 of movement which is a little bit too much I'm looking for 0.2 at this time Okay, I'm now getting point two. Uh, it is important to have spun the hub several times to seat the bearings and move any excess grease out of the way. Uh, now that I've got that on, I'm going to put my washer on. And my final nut. My lock nut. And yes, I am using second hand nuts. Been too tight to replace them. Okay, so that's tight with my box spanner, and I'm now going to remeasure my end float. The book says end float must be two to four thou. That's 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 millimeters if you subscribe to the metric system. This landy is 1960, so it doesn't. My clock does, and it says 0.07, so that's perfect. The brake drum is the final thing to go on. It's held in place by three screws. I later went back and applied some grease to the threads. Should help the next guy. I can't put the half shafts in yet until I've built the diff, so tune in next time for my rear diff rebuild video.